I started uh, the piano when I was four and my dad taught me um, from the beginning. And then I studied with a few different teachers along the way, um, just around where I lived. Um, and yes, now I study at Oberlin Conservatory of Music with Professor Peter Takac. That's kind of the basics of it. I think it has always been very natural for me. So I have never really felt like there was a decision period. Um, I just think it's always been in my heart and just the thought of doing anything else like really made me realize even clearer that this is what I really feel I'm meant to do. So I just think music, I've just always been so deeply in love with music and I can't see myself doing anything else. So it's always been natural. I always enjoyed piano lessons. I would get very nervous. I still get very nervous for my lessons. Um, but my parents never had to make me practice. I think I've always had a joy for it, just a genuine love. And I love learning. So I, I just always enjoy going to lessons and getting feedback. It's very valuable. What part of the music that you love so much? I think, so first, um, I'm Christian. So my faith is truly everything to me. And I just, I feel that through music, I can surrender to the Lord and ask him to fill me with his light so that through music, I can show people in really dark times, just I can give them hope and love and, you know, the courage to continue just through something so profound and beautiful as, as classical music. So it's just for me to have that platform to, to heal others and to show them the saving grace and light of Christ that has saved me from so many dark times. I just think that's the most beautiful gift. So that's my primary, like meaningful relationship with music. I think. How do you um, approach your, learning for instance you get a new piece and how do you get that process started um so first of course i uh learned the notes um and i think throughout i try to really internalize the music and the intentions of the composer and recently i've been learning how not i've always i think maybe subconsciously but i was kind of making the music me and imposing myself too much on the music and of course you know through music you want to show yourself and your story but more recently I've been trying to learn how to myself become the music and pour myself into the emotions of the music and so I can honestly translate to the audience the message of of the story of the composer and these universal emotions that I think everyone can relate to and just directly speak to someone's heart so yeah, I've, I've kind of been trying to take myself out of the picture so I can let the music shine because it's like Leon Fleischer always said, um, you know, we are to take the audience to the top of the mountain and then step aside so that they can enjoy the view. So it's, it's not about me, it's, it's about the music. How's your practicing look like? Um, Yes, I definitely have to spend a lot of time working on technique because I, I'm. it doesn't always come naturally to me. Like it, it has a lot of studying and a lot of slow practice and patience. And um, just, a, there are uh, quite a few different methods I might use to, to overcome a, a difficult technical passage. But ultimately, like Ashkenazi said, um, technique is at the service of musicality. So once I am able to, and it, it, it really doesn't, yeah, it's, it's a long process to be able to execute something pretty effortlessly, but ultimately that is so I can show the music and do justice to the music at the highest level. Um, yes. Yeah. You play the beautiful 109. Would you just walk us over a little bit of how you play that piece and what that piece meant to you and whether you find a special connection with the I definitely feel a very special connection to that piece. Um, it's just such an unbelievably special work of music. And I feel that certain pieces of music can transcend this earth and just become something divine. And so through that music, I feel I've been able to hear, you know, the voice of God calling me and just 
it's it's just such a profound experience at times when we totally surrender to the music and just I don't know like look to the light you know in in dark times it's just very powerful so like some something that comes to mind for me is how in the in the final movement it's a set of theme and variations and like box gold goldberg variations at the very end the original theme comes back but it's just so different than the first time that we play it at the very beginning because we've gone through this unbelievably transformative set of variations culminating in this explosion of emotion at the very end and then to come back to this like quiet peaceful transformed um very transcendent theme again it's like looking back on your whole life so just in through you know 15 minutes to be able to experience that is so amazing so that's very special to me and to and to take audience on that journey is is even more meaningful i think the beginning is is very hopeful and it's very it's very emotional and, and intimate um and it's kind of just like you're you're walking and then you maybe it's like the beginning of a journey to, towards like redemption and salvation after you know the second movement which is very intense and almost aggressive and then the the variations as they build and build it's like you're you're going through these very hard times and all of this struggle internally and and just striving for light and truth and i think the beginning represents that because of its purity and how beautiful it is and then to return to it at the end and be transformed i i think very very amazing uh throughout his life and particularly towards the end with losing his hearing and everything and just battling with with his fate i think that he suffered so much through dark times and music was there for him as in through music god was there for him and I, I f and I feel that through music. So through the music as as I suffer and also rejoice in um in, in the glory of the Lord. I I really feel very connected to the music in that because I th I think as it transcends earthly boundaries and looks to the divine, I can hear Beethoven doing that as well as as he nears the very end of his life, since it's such a late sonata, you know, at the very end of the piece, looking back at his life, it's it's very heavenly and I really feel connected to the Lord through that. Do you have a, a favorite composer or composers that you especially love? I, I love so many. I think pretty unchanging Bach is really, really special to me. I, I played so much Bach when I was younger. So I early on, I developed a very good relationship with him and I, I love so many different composers, but going back to Bach, it it feels very pure and holy. And I think because Bach really surrendered to the Lord when he composed, as I try to do when I when I perform and try to strive to to really understand the music. I love Chopin. It's just so pianistic and beautiful. And Ravel, I'm working on Ravel right now, and it just takes you to another world. It's incredible and. Rachmaninoff is so painful and has so much agony and I just really connect to that and it's like these composers and their music they understand you you know so they're there for you in hard times it's just yeah I could just I love them all very much Brahms sorry I have to say Brahms I forgot he's like one of my absolute favorites you're on your path you become a, a professional musician what are your future goals for yourself Oh, I definitely, my dream is to be a performing classical pianist. So I think really my my goal is to just take it day by day, use every day to strive and to work as hard as I possibly can and do things that please the Lord. And I think that through music, I hope that I'm doing that to the best of my ability so I just, I want to keep learning and growing, striving for the truth and to do the very best I can because I've been given this opportunity to play music, which I love. And I, I want to do the very best I can because it's an honor. It's very hard work, of course, but I think recently I've been learning what a privilege it is to work really, really hard for something you love. So 
yeah, I, I just want to keep exploring and I love meeting new people and performing is just so exciting. Yeah. How's college life for you? Oberlin is such a supportive, encouraging place. And I just feel it's such a great place to really focus and work hard. And I love being surrounded by people who, who are so passionate about music and just being in the practice hall and hearing other people is very motivating. And Oberlin just, it really amazes me because the faculty is so accomplished and just some of the very best, but they're also so human and there for you and supportive. And that's just something that really has struck me from the beginning. Um, and working with Professor Takac has just been the biggest honor. He's He is so wonderful and gracious, as you said. So I, I love being immersed in this environment. It's it's always been my dream to go to conservatory. So I'm I'm so happy I'm here. What are you working on in terms of a repertoire? Well, I love my repertoire so much right now. So um, for concerto repertoire, I'm working on Beethoven's Third, which is so great. And Ravel's Gaspard de la Nuit, which is, oh, it's it just takes you to another world, you know. I'm working on Rachmaninoff's second sonata, the second version, uh, Bach Prelude and Fugue. And that's my main, that's my main repertoire right now. Yeah. Do you, do you have to prepare for a concert usually? I feel like there's always something that I'm working towards. And if, if there's nothing scheduled, then it's important to be prepared for anything. So yeah, right now I have a few things in the works. Yeah, just just trying to get better every day, hopefully. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes, I really hope so. It's very exciting. So thank you for all you do. Really wonderful with Musical.